Radio YouTube. So I've got this C200 Mercedes-Benz all edge mask and uh, yeah, ready to put a piece of plastic over. Um, let's do this final little finishing touches. Might actually pay to clean that. Um, yeah, just this little bit up over here. You do have to be really careful, especially all these edges, things like this. This is where you can possibly get overspray. So I was careful to plug it all up down there. Also in these kind of edges, you can get like a little bit of a pocket in there. The overspray comes down and gets a misty haze of clear coat all over the um, all over your panels. I've seen it happen a few times. Um, so this is one little method to help, you know, say it does enter there. It's not gonna continue to come out and get onto the exterior panel. So that's one good thing. You can see that's all nice and tight and pushed up in there. Um, also, little things like this, make sure that's at least got a nice uh, seal down on that windscreen. Um, you know, little things like this. It can't hurt, it takes one second. It takes, um, it might take five minutes to clean the overspray up. I mean, we've, we've got, you know, overspray mitts and there's those clay bars and all that kind of thing. So, you know, removing overspray isn't as uh, tedious of a job as what it used to be, but um, yeah, like back in the day, man, when I was an apprentice, we didn't have those clay bars. I mean, they might have been around, but the, uh, the shop I was in, they didn't have it. But yeah, back in those days, man, you got overspray, you used to have to buff it off. And it just was, yeah, a big job. So, um, yeah, this one here, I'll just try to back mask. So we've got to and get, make sure I've got my finger in there to push it down so we've got a nice seal. No little pockets to get a little bit of overspray in. So, I had to have a laugh, like, this guy that, like, I did I did this uh, Mitsubishi Triton, like, it, it, I did it on Monday, and it came in, like, the paint was faded bad, and um, the headlights were done, man, like, they were, like, yellowed, and they looked really bad, so I gave them um, a couple of coats of clear coat, but, because it was a Mitsubishi Triton, it's like a four-wheel drive, and we had to, um, to get the headlights out, we would have had to have pulled the bull bar off, um, and the bump bar off, just to spray two headlights. So, <clears throat> we just decided, look, I, I got the panel beater over there, he said, hey man, um, can you get these headlights out without too much of a deal? And he's like, man, you know, it's probably minimum half the hour to get them out, and then, you know, same thing back on. It's like, well, for sake two headlights, man, you're probably only getting $100. Put a couple of coats of clear over them. Um, you know, it's just not feasible. Um, so, anyway, we left them in and I masked them up and cleared them and they look great now, you know. And I just had this guy, like, that's his business. Like, I'm not calling him out or anything. I don't want to, like, escalate it. Um, <coughs> but anyway, on Instagram, and he's like, oh, like, basically just bagging me out and like laughing at me oh you know how he's saying here's the tip take them out and laughing and shit and just being a bit of an asshole really and it's like man just because you do it for a living and you just think you're better than us you know it's like dude get with the real world man you know uh, oh well and the fun other funny thing about it is that it's like you know, what do, do I have to now pull the door off because I'm spraying the door? You know, like where do you, where do you draw the line, or do you, do you just um, you know get the skill set to be able to mask things up but do it properly? You know, so that it's not going to flake up and peel or anything like that. You know, get your prep work and your masking on point, and you should be right. I mean, most people understand that. Most people watch my videos I understand that, and they they get it. You know, they they're not from this. You know, oh, everything has to be absolute perfect show car quality dude the car came in looking like absolute shit you know it came in with faded roof like there was basically no clear coat left on the roof the bonnet there was dents all over it we're giving the car a bit of a tidy up you know giving it a bit of a new lease on life um and marking those headlights up is the least of his worries you know what i mean you get the whole car cut and polish and yeah, it's just like, man, I, I just wish I had a before photo so that I could do a before and after and say, dude, what's the problem? You know, we've, we've, we've done this car a lot of justice. Like, yesterday, our detailer was away, so I ended up actually spending probably three hours giving the entire car a cut and polish, and it's looking good, man. It's looking really good, you know? Um, 
but yeah, I don't know. You just get those people. You're always going to get them, no matter. But uh, no, I don't. It must be in the office, Grizzle. Um, but yeah, anyway, all that crap aside, gotta stop focusing on the negatives, I guess. You know, but it's it just it does it can get to you a little bit. <laughs> it's just gotta harden up a bit. But yeah, I mean, th I guess the part that hurt was that like. It was only a week earlier that he was asking me for advice, you know, um, and I gave him advice to the best of my knowledge without being there and seeing it in person, you know. And then he didn't even give at least a thanks. He's like, nah, your advice was wrong and you were just so wrong. I told you this, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, dude, you know, you're, you're advertising that you've been doing it since like 2005 and you're some, so, such a pro and you can't even, and then, you, you, then you're bagging on my work and you can't even do a bit of, um, self-diagnosis or pro pro problem solving, troubleshooting type thing, you know, you, you, you resort to me to ask questions and then <laughs> later on he, he ends up calling me and all my followers a bunch of hacks and it's like, dude, you are one of my followers, <laughs> you are one of my followers, so basically just calling yourself a hack, I mean, maybe he didn't say those exact words, I don't want to, you know, get called for saying, but where's the effect, like call me, I'm, you know, you're not as good as you think you are, you're your followers, you bunch of hacks or something like that, so come on man, you just, yeah, it's a bit rude, really, no need for that kind of stuff online, I don't know, I don't, I, I don't do any of this, these videos or posts, with any malice intended, and as I said, like, I've gone out of my way to, um, to help him, and without even as much of a thanks, and then a week later he goes and starts bagging me out. It's like, dude, where do you get off, you know? That's the problem, man. Yeah, it's come out, what is that, 9.30 or something like that. I'd like to get this done before my morning tea break so I can be baking. They wanted it to go today, so um, my next job uh, up is a Mazda CX-9 in machine grey. It's basically like a shadow chrome, I guess we can call it. Um, I did a Mazda 6 last week, which is the same colour but different variants. So the Mazda 6s and the CX-9s uh, have machine grey on them. But yeah, two different variants. So I found that um, the standoff variant that we've got is great. Oh, thanks, Frizzle. Say hello to the YouTubers. Hey, <laughs> yeah, there's Frizzle. Um, he's, he's the old dude I work with. He's got himself a bit of a band here in Perth. A bit of a, you know, side gig. He might do a gig once every, I don't know, four, six weeks, four to six weeks or something like that. Got like a rock band. Um, so yeah, if you're in Perth and you like your, your classic rock, um, rock and roll I think it is, you know, um, and yeah, go check out Frankie and the Rockets, I think he's got a pretty big Facebook page, so yeah, that's where he spends most of his online time, if you want to check him out online too, Frankie and the Rockets. I think Rockets is spelled R-O-C-K-I-T-S, maybe, so Frankie and the Rockets, yeah, he's a good dude. Um, he's the one that taught me one of uh, a very popular trick that I showed you guys in another video where if you're putting two pack fine filler in you can put like a little bit of uh, what is it you can put a bit of base coat color so um, you know I, I sprayed my bonnet uh, red and I only had um, like blue hardener so yeah I just put a bit of base coat red in there and yeah I got that one up Frankie so yeah good little trick now that's, what it's, that's what it's like in this trade, you know, you've, um, you've just got to pick tricks up off everyone and add it to your bag, you know, like I might have, say, tried that trick, not liked it, not used it, I might say, yeah, I mean, he, he used it, but I don't like it, but, you know, on the other hand, I tried it, I used it, and I liked it, so, you know, now it's one, one of my tricks. I'm sure there's lots of you guys out there that have picked lots of tricks up off me and I um, can't say that I invented them all, but you know, like I, I decided that it was good enough. There's a few things that I have sort of came up with myself and um, honed down through my own experience and yeah, it's part of it I guess. Learn from each other and yeah, it's like one of my new 
trainees, I think he's doing detailing at the moment, you know, I just said to him, the, the more you know, the more you're worth, like you're adding value to yourself. So rather than talking about what, you, what you're doing on your weekend and your favorite band, you should be asking me questions about the compounds I'm using and the denibbing papers I'm using and how how much pressure I'm putting on the buff, you know, because that's what he's that's going to be the first thing he learns around here. It's denibbing and polishing um, before he comes into the paint shop. So yeah, uh, I just sort of you know, not not saying it to him nastily. It's, it's in his best interest to take it positively and and learn from it, you know. But yeah, that's the way I was like. I've always um needed my job so <laughs> it's been in my best interest to be the best I can be you know like um, I've always just thought like if if I'm the best painter here I'm gonna be the last one that they let go you know what I mean because it, it was always the case of if, if I don't have my job then I don't get paid and if I don't get paid I can't pay my rent I'm getting kicked out of my home I can't eat you know what I mean so I've never been the guy that like lives at home with mum and dad or anything like that and you know had a bit of a chip on my shoulder because I don't need my job no it's always been in my best interest to be um, you know a good employee so just remembered I forgot to read the job sheet on this that's like the golden rule you've always got to read the job sheets because that outlines what's on the job you know the boss doesn't obviously have time to mummy everybody in the in the workshop so they put a job sheet in the car um, and we read the job sheet and that'll tell you what you have to paint on the car but I actually honestly I, I remembered this morning but then I forgot <laughs> I had it in my I better check that job sheet before I go in the booth and then my mind again so I will have to read that before I uh, do start spraying for all I know there's a spot repair on the other side of the corner of the bumper so you know the last thing you want to do is have it out the back at four o'clock ready to go home uh, what the hell are you doing Gunny you didn't do that spot repair so, yeah so I mean it's not really ideal being up to this stage and finding out if there is one but it's better than four o'clock out of the back so yeah it's all good Usually a job sheet sitting in the car. Probably, yeah, I have to jump over the other side. <laughs> Alright, so that's us masked up. I'm gonna go check this job sheet before I go too far. I'll turn the camera off for that. Radio, so I checked my job sheet. I didn't miss anything, thankfully. So that's all good. And we're ready to prep so. So yeah, I actually had some of this color sitting on my bench. Like, I, this is a pretty common color. It's called selenite. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing that right, but I doubt I'm gonna offend anyone if I didn't. It's probably a German name, selenite. Um, I think it's like seven, nine or is it that no double nine two yeah pretty common color these days I've been spraying quite a, a lot of them but there's two variants so just like I was saying about the Mazda CX-9s and the Mazda 6s same color name same color code but different variants so um, I found the sedans are different than the four-wheel drives or the wagon bodies um, so did I've actually got I had two of these um, colors sitting on my bench and I checked both of them to this Mercedes GL I think it was ML or a GL 
I did on Monday and this color was t totally terrible it looked really red and the other one was perfect but it looked quite uh, more on the bluer side um, and then this one I got the other color that looked red for the other one and it looked perfect so like I did respray it out to double check so yeah I don't know worth keeping in mind I actually don't think it's that bad of a color but the crazy thing about that um machine gray is like to the untrained eye man you would barely even notice the difference from this color here which is the standard two-stage metallic to master machine gray you know it just seems like a bit of a i don't know blank factor maybe no cut throughs or anything crazy on that edge i, I did sound a bit of a some of those sausages out that a bit of a thick edge they have on these but it looks like it didn't quite cut through which is good because I, I just want to keep that color contained to where I need it and then we just clear coat over the rest so I've got the um, the guns in here already I bought them in I'm gonna have to go get some more tape before and yeah next up I just got to go out get my spray suit and respirator and let's put a bit of tape over this rubber here it never really wants to stick so that's not sticking for shit man Maybe when I come back in a few minutes, the prep sole will have dried and hopefully it's gonna stick, but yeah, be back soon. Right now, YouTube, so yeah, back to it. Now, first up, I'm going to be putting down my 599, which is just basically just clear base coat. And I still get questions about it. I mean, I, I, I know everyone hasn't seen all my videos, so I'm just gonna keep explaining it in each video. People still say they love watching them, so as long as you guys keep watching, I'll keep making, you know? I think that's something that um, Matt Grady said about the Simpsons. He goes, man, if people keep watching it, I'll keep making it. And, I mean, I don't watch it anymore, but I think they're still making it. But, um, yeah, all that aside, so you just find some of mine. <laughs> it is a, actually a tinker on our tinting machine. And it's just, it's called stabilizer, or well, you can call it base coat binder, it's also referred to as. And um, it's basically what it actually does when you put this into a teller, it will, it will um, give the metallic something to float into. So you can basically um, float, uh, what is it, flake or dry powdered um, pearls or something like that you can float that in here and allow you to spray it evenly over a panel uh, you can also use it to fill in the prep scratches when doing refinishing and that will help your color blend so on a color like this if i was not to use this you would see a halo say i finish my color here you see a bit of a halo um, around the the blend area. So yeah, mate, that's all this stuff does. In, in this instance, it just builds in my press scratches and helps the blend. And it's clear, it's face coat, you know, it dries just as fast as face coat, so, you know, it's, it's, it's not clear coat as far as a two pack clear coat that thinks it's lost coat, but it is a clear substance. It does actually have a very slight yellow tinge to it, you may be able to see, but that's when it's in a put. When it's spread out thinly over a panel like this, you won't notice any colour difference. Um, sometimes, if you're not careful on a, a light silver, you may see it if you go too heavy on the edge. But then all you can do there is just put it up to this area, what you've seen me doing there. You don't actually have to go right up to the edge. On a colour like this, it's really not going to be an, an issue at all. It's not light enough, but yeah, you don't actually have to spray right up to that very edge where um, the panel finishes. So, got that down. Now I'm just going to start putting the base coat colour down the DZ1. So that gun I was just using there was my ANIF-160 Silver. It's basically exactly the same thing as the F-150, but just a, a different colour. I think they made a couple of minor design tweaks to them as well, but yeah, great gun for the price, man. They're like, what are they, like, 160 bucks or something. I got one that I use for wet on wet, one for primer, one for, one for face coat blender, one for 
Yeah, yeah two K colours and just a really handy gun to have. I mean, they're capable of clearing, but yeah, you know, I've, I've got better clear guns, so I don't always use them for clear. They just don't put enough material on, so um, basically turn the pressure down. We'll just get get the more material on and a bit more and a bit thicker. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking for with this one. Whereas say if, if this is like a Mazda, I might I might say go for that super, you know. 
so yeah, you, you can manipulate the finish that you get just by settings and even application, you know, the speed that you go in. Um, if this was my last coat, that would actually, it's too fine of an orange peel, but I'm going to put a heavy one on for the second coat and we'll thicken it up a bit. But yeah, I just, I don't want to go and rush it, so I want to leave that for minimum three to four minutes, you know, because it is a hot day today, you know, if it was the middle of winter, man, I'd probably walk out, go have my morning tea, the morning, like, the, those micro boys are probably about to come back with our, our coffee for morning tea, <coughs> but it is, it is a warmer day, and I'm using fast hardener, so, now that should flash off in yeah, three minutes or so. And I would like to get this all finished off before I do have my break. I will leave it probably over my break to just flash off before I hit bake. Um, I used to always hit bake straight away, but this boot can actually have issues. Like, it's a bit of a different setup. I have said it in other videos that it's usually around the middle of the year I'll start getting stuff falling from the roof. Uh, you probably, if you've been watching for a while, you probably remember me saying that middle of last year, like starting to get silicon spots from things dropping from the roof and that. But what they ended up actually doing this time is, so you've got that that filter that you can see there, but they actually rolled out a blanket type thing, like another not blanket, but you know what I mean, like another filter over the top of that to hopefully catch more of it. And it seems to have been working because. Yeah, around this time of year it starts, like, minor, but it, it hasn't, it hasn't seemed to have done that this year. Yeah, this has got a little thick when it's done, it's got to be clean, I'm happy with the blend. Because I love painting these cars, man, I just love doing a nice car, like a, I don't know, I don't get a great deal of, um, satisfaction out of just doing shitty old, you know, 30 year old Commodores or something like that, you know. Um, the other side of it is, it's actually easier to work on newer cars because well, you've got less bone chips, less pinnings, you know like let's just say this is like a 4 or 5 year old car where we're paid to do a repair here but there was like an extra dent there I would fix it, you know, like you can't just go and clear over stuff like that um, I mean I've got a cut off limit if there was damage to that side of my blend panel, I'll fix it the other side Sorry man, you want to fix, you want that fixed? You're going to have to pay to get it fixed and blend the next panel. But, yeah, it's all good. So we're probably not too far off ready to go. Um, yeah, that, that's packed off nicely actually already. That's going to be just about right to go, but I'll just tell you guys the clear that I'm using. So stand off, stand in clear with the VOC hardener in it at 4 to 1, and that was a bit of a funny ratio, it's a bit, a bit thinner than my favourite clears, but very user friendly this stuff, and it's capable of some quality results too. So I'm going to slow down just a touch on this second coat, just to thicken that finish up a little, just try and match that orange peel nicely. You see I'm painting through those, those edges, I'm not stopping right at the edge of the panel so I don't get big sausages building up on those edges or you, some call it window frames With that. I'm really happy with that actually. So you see that? That's right on 350 mils, man. Like I reckon 300, you know, there, there might be 10, 10 or 15 mils left there. But if I was using my Pro Light, 
I probably would have cut that material down by 40, 40 or 50 mils, you know? So, not a massive amount per job, but as, as you add those jobs up over a year, you know, I'll do two to three jobs a day. So, yeah, it's something that over a prolonged period of time, it will make a difference. But I'll give you guys a look over this car, and then I'm going to go have my morning tea.